friends, welcome to the All Canadian Reptile Girl. I'm Annalise and I'm a touch psychic. And this is Pirate Pete, most of a bearded dragon. As you can see, he does not have the same number of feet that most beardies have, but you might be surprised to know that the number of feet is not the only unusual thing about him. Let me ask you this. How many eyes does Pirate Pete have? The answer might surprise you. So let's count, shall we? We have got his left eye and a right eye. So that's two, right? Two eyes. That's the best amount of eyes. <laughs> nope. Let's look again. There's one here, one here, and one sneaky little one right there on the top of his head. Yeah, Pete has more eyes than he does feet. But to be fair, if you didn't know it was there, you'd never even notice it, right? This third eye is called a parietal eye and can be found in many species of reptiles, amphibians, and even fish. It is located on the top of the head, just behind the brain, and is covered by a transparent scale called a parietal scale. Now, this eye doesn't really see like conventional eyes do. It doesn't resolve detailed images, that's just not what it's for. Also, being covered by skin probably doesn't help either, right? In some species, it can register rough shapes, but what it is really good at is detecting light and subtle changes in intensity and direction. This eye is sometimes referred to as a pineal eye because it is linked directly to the pineal gland, a small endocrine gland in the brain. Humans have this gland too, by the way, but not all of its functions are fully understood Though, we do know part of its function is to regulate a number of hormones relating to reproduction and modulating sleep patterns, circadian rhythms, seasonal rhythms, all of that stuff. So, all things tied to the phases of light to dark. In addition to helping regulate hormones by feeding information on light intensity independent of conventional eyes, the ability to detect changes in light is also very useful in avoiding predators that attack from above or behind like birds of prey, a common predator of lizards. This is why it's a good idea to not grab your lizard from above, especially when they are small. They detect the change in light from your looming hand and they may think that they are about to become hawk poop. Over time, when you've built some trust or through generations of captive breeding, it becomes less of a concern as they are less likely to freak out, but it's something to be mindful of, especially if you have a stress-prone lizard. You wanna scoop, not ka. You know? So let me ask you a question. When I asked how many eyes Pirate Pete had, did you get the answer right? If you did, congratulations, you win! Hit that like button to claim your prize, which is the good feeling of helping me and my channel. If you guessed wrong, that's okay, you get a consolation prize, which is helping YouTube decide if more people should see my content. Hit the like button to claim your prize. Yeah, yeah, Pete, I, look, I know that that was cheeky, all right? But hitting the like button is like super important for a YouTube channel and I really don't want YouTube to take away my magic Dakota ring. Look, you know what? Why don't you try to come up with new ways to ask for likes? It's a little harder than you think. Jeez, huh. Oh, um, ignore that. Back to freaky lizard biology. Uh, while most lizards have this parietal eye, not all of them do. Seeds like Jub Jub My Tegu, uh, eh. some think they might, but it's generally accepted that they don't. And if they do, it's very rudimentary. Geckos, for example, definitely don't have this incredible third eye. But does this put them at a disadvantage? Not really. Geckos tend to be nocturnal or crepuscular, and they have other mechanisms to accomplish similar functions, including a lack of eyelids to block out light from their conventional eyes. So they're good without it. Don't worry, I even did like a survey with all of the geckos I have just to make sure, and they're all perfectly happy with two deliciously lickable eyes. Mmm. I mentioned earlier that humans also have a pineal gland that regulates the same kind of hormones found in our reptilian cousins. Does this mean that we have this third eye too? No. Or, you know what, maybe yes. Once upon a time, but not really. Probably not. Look, the most commonly accepted thought on this is that way back in our collective lineage, 
mammalian evolution took a turn away from having this extension of the pineal gland that would have eventually developed into an eye. Because evolution had other ideas, we missed our shot at having some really freaky looking sunglasses. Oh well. But there are some researchers that think that at one point humans did in fact have a third eye that would have been at the back of the head. Human pineal glands have a sensitivity to light, even though there is no way for the light to get to it, you know, being buried deep inside our brain encased by a thick bony skull as it is. But it suggests to some that we did in fact have a parietal eye at one point, and that as humans evolved, the eye atrophied and was absorbed into the pineal gland. It's also been suggested that a now dormant parietal eye is the basis of the concept of the mind's eye or inner eye that is common in many cultures and spiritual circles. It's also probably why moms can see what their kids are doing even when they aren't looking. Neat, eh? So there you go. If you have a pet lizard or amphibian, there is a very good chance that they have more eyes than you. How cool is that? It's a little weird to think about, but it's pretty cool. A big thanks to my friends on Patreon. These guys get early videos, behind the scenes stuff, and more. I hope you enjoyed learning a bit about the parietal eye. I had a lot of fun researching the topic. Eyes are oddly interesting. Pirate Pete and I thank you for watching with all of your eyes. And until next time, remember to nurture all nature. Bye. No, no, he falls. His legs aren't good. It would, it would be okay. I never noticed that. Really? These ones? His little pegs. For anyone who doesn't know, this is my other cat, Beckett. She is usually less inclined to join us for filming, but she is the one that is actually my cat. Oscar is my mom's. Um, yeah, she's getting to be an older lady now. She's getting the old lady fur. She's 11 and a half years old. And we've had her since she was six months old. I was six and a half years old when we got her. So yeah, that's just some Beckett backstory. Hope you enjoyed. <laughs>